Hey, this is Cherry V, and this is Inspire My Smile. You are tuned into Vanessa J. Inspire My Smile. So, Cherry V, thank you for doing the interview for Inspire My Smile. Cherry V, the singer, the songwriter, the backing vocal artist, like so many layers to what you do. Like, how are you? How's your day been? What's been, how's lockdown been treating you? <laughs> I'm good, man. I, I mean, trying to balance life, everyday life with um, maintaining music and maintaining good mental health and just being actually all right all round um I guess it has its challenges but I'm good man I've had a good day today and I'm happy to be here man it's nice to kind of like be releasing new music talking about that and just tapping in with people that I've like conversed with online for because we've, we've we've conversed online a few times in it like, yeah yeah Instagram and all that stuff so it's nice to like properly having a direct chat now it's nice it, exactly like gearing up to this day like and it's been a long time coming um looking at your catalogue like how far you've come like to now I swear it's been like over a decade yeah 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 definitely yeah. All, um, I was I was sitting there thinking to myself and I thought when was like what was the first moment that like introduced me to Cherry V I was thinking you know when you think about like what was that first song or that first mm. moment you think of where you first come across an artist yeah listen I had to go back to, now I'm going to get this wrong. As a graphophobia, is that the right? You know, everyone that... does it, everyone does it. <laughs> a, a for go, <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, this is this is this is epic because I can't even say the own name of my EP. Aether's agoraphobia. That's it. Right there, it is. I've been practicing it all day. I knew I was gonna get it wrong, so I had to go back to SoundCloud because I think that EP stuck out to me a lot. Mm. Um, twenty sixteen is my jam from that mm. EP. Like I didn't realize the meaning of it, so I checked out the meaning. And obviously it's about anxiety and like fears and stuff. So was that a reflection of you or what you was going through at, at that time? 100%. Like um, the actual definition of atheist agoraphobia is the fear of being forgotten. Yeah. And I feel like, um, because as you said, um, we were talking about this earlier, it's like there's been so many different roles and hats that I've worn mm. as a songwriter um and I've done the session thing I've done backing vocals I've done mm. circuits I've done um voiceover stuff I've done voice acting I've just done so many things but you know I've always kind of wanted to maintain a strong presence as Cherry V the artist and I remember at that time I was kind of toying with like losing the red hair I was toying with um you know, what the brand meant to me. Um, and also I'd just taken a break from um, actual artistry and I was doing a lot of um, backing vocals at that time because I was out on the road with Jesse J. So I was just returning and kind of thinking like, what does this, like, what does this mean to me now? Am I doing it because I want to and I feel led to, or is it because I'm trying to do it to kind of like remind people that I still exist? And then I remember it was just like, it was so many different things. Um, and I just, I remember I saw this word, I came across this word one day and I was just like, this it literally, the de definition of it embodied everything that I was feeling. So I thought, do you know what? I'm not even gonna shy away from the difficulty of the title of the EP. I'm just gonna run with it. <laughs> And I did. Every time someone tries to quote, they're like, you know, the one, the one, the EP with the A, the A, the A, Aether one, the Aether one. I'm like, Excorophobia. Trust me, it took a while. I went on YouTube and I typed the word in. You know, sometimes on YouTube, you could type words in yeah. and somebody can tell you how to yeah. pronounce it. Yeah, that is what I did to learn my own, the own name of my EP because I wanted to be fast. But yeah, that's the story. Wow. It. 
I literally spent the whole day practicing that word. Like I did, I did <laughs> I'm gonna get it right. I'm gonna get it right. And then when it comes to saying it, nah, nah. Uh, yeah, you, yeah. I was, you know, it took me a while as well. So you know, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> so from then so that was back in 2015 yeah so from 2015 and this is where I've noticed the theme as well so obviously that's about um the fear of forgetting someone or something and then if we fast forward to like 2018 when you release brown eyed soul and you listen to the the music and listen to the lyrics and listen that EP, yeah, is my favourite EP oh. of your... Oh. Like, even to this day, I still play that EP. And 2018, actually, the reason why, why it's, it's such a good one, a good EP for me is because I was going through some really bad times as well. Mm. And when I'm listening to um, Situation Shift, mm. I put my self in that situation like the lyrics the oh man like how like how do you come up with such good storytelling like so relatable so personal do you know what it is it's because it is it's personal that's yeah. why because situation shit is crazy because me and wilson have a real friendship in terms mm. of like you know sometimes they have these industry friendships and like mm. like he's a proper diamond geezer yeah mm -hmm. um and a great friend and you know we'd, we'd see each other out at events and we're like oh, I think one time he was like yeah we should get in the studio and then was like no then let's not be like this mm -hmm. other people and be like let's get him let's actually do it and mm -hmm. fast forward to the session like we spoke about so many things um do with our past people that we were around at the time and unfortunately, at one time in our life, even if it wasn't in that precise moment when we wrote that song, mm. it was so true to an emotion that we went through. And yeah. also so many similar um, relationships, situationships that were happening and around us. And it became such a common thing. And oh no, it's, it's a common thing now. Situationship, yeah. no one wants to commit, no one wants to put a title on it. Uh, yeah. And when we really reflected back on our own journeys in relationships, um, before you know the situation, before the relationships we were in at that time, it was just like this is so true to what's happening now. Yeah. And when you think back to those moments of rejection and you know really feel it like unrequited love, basically, mm. and you just go back to that place, you just feel the emotion that oh. So if I feel that if I'm not there anymore. I more than certain know that there's going to be people out there relate. I have never had my DMs, apart from when I do cooking videos, I've yeah. never had my DMs pop so much like that since when, when we dropped that song. Like, it was crazy. That was a real one. And the, the limit that rings to me is... Stuck in a situation ship I'm addicted to the pain I live the light that tells me if I'm patient it will turn into a relationship. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's just a powerful song, man. Like the whole EP is just amazing. Like my my, my favorite tune on that album, but on the EP is um Leave Me Be. Oh. Leave me, leave me be is my jam, like. Yeah. man and I, I kind I kind of feel like from like the audience perspective as well it's like we're going through that journey with you as well yeah um, so I really like the way how that really came across and then actually in 2018 you did your headline tour in, show, in yeah. London so mm. that was like for the the, the EP the brand I soul EP I've got a story to tell you go on so that day I booked myself, I booked the day off from work. I said, right, I'm getting ready for Cherry V's concert, you know, I'm getting ready for the concert. <laughs> so I made it down. I saw the support artists electrifying, like the whole vibe was just nice. Charlie Monique. Um, Charlie Monique, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
So waiting for Terry V to come on the stage, you know, literally I'm che checking my time because I've had to come back to Birmingham. <laughs> so when Terry V comes on the stage, I must have caught about 15, 20 minutes and I had to leave. <gasps> oh my gosh. Cause it, is, is it because I was late? No, because I had to get my train. <sighs> I had to get my train. I'm sorry. I had I'm to get my train. Sorry. But, but to make up for it, I'm kind of pleased because I, I already caught you perform at Danielle's um, headline. Wow. I caught wow. you there. So when I saw you there, you had on your nice little hoodie and the ponytail and the, the long boots. The thigh high boots. The thigh <laughs> high boots. Terry V was going in. You are so beautiful though. You, you literally, you are a beautiful woman. Like mm -hmm. you just ooze with just love and really draws people in like you want to get to know who cherry v Aww. but um i like that about you i really like that about you um so fast forward to 2020 brown girl brown man so we're going we still we're sticking with there's like a theme there's a mm. theme from um afrozagophobia <laughs> <laughs> there's a theme from it to you, brown know, no, you know, you know, let's do this. Let's do this. Say Aether. Aether. Zagora. Zagora. Phobia. Phobia. Aether Gazorophobia. Aether. Aether. Zagora. Zagora. Phobia. Phobia. Aether Gazorophobia. Oh, almost, almost, but you're almost there anyway. <laughs> um, Brown girl, brown man. That that song, um, yeah, that was really relevant for 2020. Mm. What was the mind process for that? Obviously, because of what happened, you know, Black Lives Matter, you know, the whole thing of so many like topics was going on on online in regards to black men, black women, and your see your song came at the right time. Mm. Um, you did the remix and then you did you did two remixes didn't you? you did the singers and the MCs yeah because I'd done an Instagram um, collaboration search and there was like I couldn't whittle it down to like to have a singer and a rapper on, on the track so I had to do two different versions mm. um, but yeah that song was definitely um, captured a lot of that stuff that was going at the moment mm. captured a lot of my thoughts and feelings and um painful memories um to do with colorism police brutality as well so yeah it was a lot it's funny because that song was actually written before 2020 um mm. and that song was triggered by some social media mm. um rants about like black yeah. girls asking girls and just triggered me so much to write that song yeah and then um they i think it was a it was more around the time of Eric, I want to say Eric Garner, or mm. I want it was probably around more of the time closer to them that mm. I wrote the song. Um, but yeah, it just happened to when lo lockdown happened and, and when you know some of the things happened in 2020, it was like I had to like literally go back to my old team and be like, we need to put this song out. Yeah. And then so said, so done. When I hear the lyrics as well, and I just for me that I, I do prefer the singer's version. Um, there's just so many textures. It's just nice. Liv Soul and Alyssa, yeah. yeah. Beautiful voices. Beautiful, man, beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. So how do you stay creative? Like, what's your, what's your routine? It's been very difficult. It's been very difficult. Um, and obviously, like, with limitations and, like, because of the whole limitation of COVID, there's now, now there's extra, like, budget limitations to do stuff. Um, and then because I'm spending so much time at home, mm. I can, like, I can honestly say it's not the place really where I want to create. Yes. Before. Because mm. I have, this is the only space really that I have. Um, so, yeah, it's been a bit difficult. It's made me kind of look at my backup catalogue a bit more because um, mm. there are songs that I've written that I was due to release before and I didn't and themes like now's a good time to dip into that catalogue that folder on my laptop 
Um, but yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to like using this time to think about whether or not, well, I've been thinking about it more so, but like how the album's gonna sound and how the album's gonna look and you know, how am I, how am I gonna convey those messages the best way that I can. Mm. Um, so it's been, it has been difficult. It hasn't been a breeze for me at all, but I'm, I'm on the better s- side of it now. Cause initially, whew, it was mad. <laughs> like, you know, everyone was yes. like, everyone was like, oh, this is the time you need to, use, you, this is the time that you need to, you know, learn a new skill. You should be shining out loads of content. And I was like, content? No, not right now. Um, no. So yeah, it's been, it's been up and down, but feeling so much better now. And slowly get into creating some more fresh material mm. do you find that um when you create your alter ego vexing mm. and veronica yeah did you find that that helps you as well like that uplifts your mood and because you've got a comedy side to you like have you ever dipped into comedy have you ever performed any sketches or anything do you know what i feel like the games the game the rules have changed I think once upon a time would be like, you don't mix the two. You don't, musicians don't mix comedy and blah, 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 unless it's like a music video or whatever you're casting a film. But as an artist, you don't mix the two. But but yeah, there's been times and it is a pick me up um, Mm. just because I'm able to kind of like vent about certain things that I feel like I find that uh, can be serious but I can find the comedic side to it my mum and dad are absolutely like natural comedians so that's like where that comes from um and then everyone from my gra- my great grandma to sister such and such from church to the lady that lives down the road or the one you always see in the post office or whatever that's cussing about something it, that's who vexation veronica is so I, it does make me delve into my past but like comedic moments and then draw from that so yeah it does lift my spirits a lot I feel Mm. like creatively they're so different Mm. Um, and it's like people said oh you know you should like say uh, fixation Veronica should talk about cherry v stuff and blah 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 but I'm just like "Mm, I don't even know if I really want to blur the two I like Mm. like having the separate channels while I created the page Um, but I'm just so glad that I don't feel conscious about doing that anymore because once upon a time I wouldn't because I would that would be deemed as like you're not serious as an artist or you're not you know what I mean I would tell myself that like you need to be serious you need to be demure <laughs> all these things yeah um, so I'm glad that I'm able to be free in that way now and just kind of like do that when and as and when I feel yeah I like that I really I really like that side of you I like I like seeing the different sides and um you was doing your own little content with the Cherry Sunday, the little covers and stuff. So mm-hmm. it's nice to break out of, you know, just that singer that we know and we've seen, you know, the, the other side. And I feel like the, I feel like you've got a lot to give. Mm. You've got a lot to give that mm. we've seen, but we haven't seen. Mm. And it, I feel like it's coming. Yeah, do you know what? I think it's, it's crazy because I think sometimes the there's a beauty in being able to do a few different things but then there's also like it can feel a bit chaotic sometimes because there's so many things like you know there's music there's comedy there's acting there's um there's songwriting there's just so many different layers to kind of delve into um that it's 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 it can be like difficult if you don't add a structure to it do you know what I'm saying (laughs) um but yeah it's it's it's, it's an interesting one and I'm still navigating and um, finding my way through it. And I think uh, some people have said to me, like, there's certain things that are still to come because I still enjoy it. Yeah. I think the minute I stop enjoying it, then I'll be like, I just don't know. And I just feel like nowadays, because of the internet, there's just no rules. Like you could be doing something for a certain period of time and then you do one thing and it's, everything just goes crazy or that one thing goes viral or do you know what I mean so that's quite inspiring at times as well do you know what I mean yeah yeah mm. and the, let's not forget the middle eight podcast as well yeah like oh my gosh you three <laughs> I couldn't put a better trio together but the real it's so real 
And I feel like this, and I'm sitting there and I'm waiting for the stories, you know, because I can relate to what you, what you guys are saying. Like, I yeah. know that um, nonsense that's gone down, like, throughout the, like, the careers and stuff. So, and it's nice to see Jermaine as well. Because yeah. I know, obviously, you two have your collaboration going on, Dora yeah. Martin. Yeah. So, is that ever coming back? Are you Do you know what? It's so funny because we... On the, on the podcast, yeah, we have the podcast that we record. And then when we press stop, we have another chat and we delve into like even nitty more things and nitty gritty. Um, and then it's funny because Ricardo asked me and Jermaine that. So what are you saying? Is there going to be another Dora Mind project or what? Like, come on, like, draw, I'm drawing you lot out. Um, and we both said, yeah, but when is... Because really and truly, I haven't, said, I haven't, said, I haven't told anyone this, but the plan was the next Dora My EP was going to be 2020. And the songs are there, mm. the name's there, mm. the project's there, to be fair, but it's just because of what happened. Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? I, it's just like, yeah. are we really doing this? And obviously the first EP took us on three tours and mm-hmm. we had loads of like TV coverage. We had 106 and Park in, in, in the States and like mm-hmm. it's covered a lot of ground with that one. So we, we didn't want to put something out and not be able to, you know, see the fruits of that. Mm. So, yeah. Sorry. So, yeah, um, there could be another one coming. Just when it will be, I don't know. Don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really nice to just see all three of us together. And I, I would hope that, obviously, after lockdown, you get to meet up physically and you're all in a little studio. I can't then- wait for that. I just cannot. Do you know the only reason why that's not happening now as well? So like, obviously you can do that now. The spaces are open. But obviously Ricardo's just had a little one in it. So yeah. and he lives up north. So really and truly Birmingham. So yeah, it's from my city. I thought so. I thought something sounded familiar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> sounded familiar. Um. So yeah, that's like that's why we're kind of like still on Zoom. But I cannot wait to get in the space because. I just feel like it's just going to look so much even, you know what I mean, even better. And it's yeah. just going to be our vibe even more. Like, it's going to be, like, that times 10. So, yeah, I can't wait for that, man. I cannot yeah, wait. I can't wait. I sit there and I watch and I notice you're always eating. Me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Always, that's something. Craven. Craven. Always. <laughs> them, two are, well, them two are jamming and I'm always like, oh, I've got a drink. I wouldn't change it. I'd keep 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 doing what you're doing because that's part that is part of the last. Like it's just so funny. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm yet to watch. I'm yet to watch the next. Have you put out two of your um podcasts out yet? Or is it just one that you've put out? I think it's one. I think one. Yeah. Okay. Ricardo after this. I'm due to catch up on that one. Do you yeah. so that brings us on to your new project? Well, new song, yeah, yeah. Well, new song, mm. yeah. I'm um, dropping um, an acoustic song, yeah. So, um, my, my new single, Double Decker, out March fifth. If you're watching this, and it's March fifth has passed, then it's out. And if it's not, then it's coming out soon. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's coming out, um, and it's an acoustic song. It's literally, I described it on one of my Instagram posts as like literally like the guitarist Jason Bond played his guitar and he hosted a therapy session because it was literally um, just some stuff that I was going through after a relationship. And it's, again, it's just honest. It's just Mm. honest. I feel like a lot of, sometimes when relationships end, um, dare I say, Mm -hmm. um, women don't own their part. Um, and some of that, some of this song is about that. Um, and it's just about owning my shh, you know mm. what I mean? And um, just at the same time, calling out some other stuff, but it's the same, you know, like owning my own stuff and just like having a look at myself, mm-hmm. um, but also not allowing it to consume me. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, this one, Double Decker is, is a, is one straight from the heart once again. I don't know how to write music any other way, to be honest. So yeah, so, yeah no. I'm gonna get it. 
from the heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to hear it because I feel like acoustic. I really like I like you doing acoustic as well. Like it's it's more intimate, and we get to hear your vocals, the full range. You know, <laughs> I just feel like you, even for your soul for sessions as well. Like, how was the, um, the whole experience? And oh. so for sessions, um, yeah, I've done it a few times, and I. When I went to LA before COVID, um, I'd done quite a few of them out there and that was just so nice. It was a good way to gig, good way to meet new people and um, just expand on like supporters and, and like the network. Um, it's like one of my favorite songs, one of my favorite gigs to do because you're surrounded by music lovers, do you know what I mean? Mm. And it's so quiet that you can hear an actual pin drop when you're singing and it's but it's all acoustic and do you know what I, I can't remember the last time I've done a gig of original music with a backing track mm. every time I'm called to do a gig it's either like acoustic main guitar or it's a full band like mm. I, I'm not the girl that rolls up with a backing track I just don't do it um mm -mm. and I just like to give a raw authentic experience man um, and uh, you know, it's every every gig's another a learning session for me. Um, and I've got more comfortable as the years have gone by speaking to the audience and sharing my stories and having a bit of banter and whatever else to it. So I really, really enjoy acoustic performances and it's kind of it's kind of time to kind of bring that bit more to my records as well. Yeah, hundred percent. So um with the double double decker single. Is there going to be an EP, an album coming from that, or is it just a single for now? Um, <laughs> I'm in between because there's almost like an acoustic EP there. Yeah. That could be kind of ready to go. However, um, <laughs> I'm like, do I just crack on and, and put those acoustic songs onto an album? Do you know what yeah. I mean? And I'm still, I'm still kind of taking my time with that. Yeah. And there's no rush. There's no so. rush. Absolutely no rush. And I think, you know what? I think as women as well, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Like why, like literally I could be sitting here and I know that I've got loads to do. I know I'm, multi I'm multitasking in my head. But why do you put so much pressure? Why are we doing it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like trying to, I don't know. I don't know. It's like, I have to remind myself as well. And I feel like the, the, that pandemic has made me kind of be a bit more still. Yeah. Remind myself like, babe, it's you one, you know, like yeah. I'm having to do everything myself. So yeah. the, 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 the sooner I, I take the pressure of myself is the, is the better that I can just kind of take that spare time that I have to just create and think about the stuff that I, cre I have created that nobody's heard yet. Um, mm. Mm -hmm. that's just been in my back pocket because mm -hmm. brown, brown man was was in my back pocket you know there's other songs that I've got in my back pocket that I was kind of scared to release before because of how honest they are and because of the side of me that they're revealing that some of my family members don't know do you know what I mean mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so yeah so as a artist as a woman what's what's gonna be cherry v after lockdown in the new norm <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i just i'm definitely um looking forward to just being able to create freely um just being able to move around freely and create freely um i know like there's like loads of studios that are open now but it's like almost still like a vibe of like you know mm. do you want to mix with certain people do you want to do you know what i mean mm. um definitely a project whether that's going to be an EP or an album I haven't decided um a bit more focus into um Cherry Von Sell, the actress as well um mm -hmm. tapping into that um yeah. yeah just doing the best I can with what I have <laughs> basically yeah and what what inspires you to smile every day <laughs> health my he good health um, Amen. yeah good health 
um life life and good health like just the fact that I still got breath in my lungs um and I've been allowed to wake up and see another day mm. is reason enough to smile especially with everything that's mm. been the past year and a bit um so yeah good life good health good. strength mm. strength good life good <laughs> health strength and listen I just want to say Thank you for your time. Thank you for doing the interview with Inspire My Smile. Double Decker is out on Friday, the 5th of March. So everybody go and support that. And yeah, like, Cherry V, man. Cherry V in the house. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. It's been so nice talking to you. It's been so nice talking to you. You are tuned into Vanessa J. Inspire My Smile. Tears in the shower, I couldn't leave Buried the pain, started to cheat so boldly I thought I was right because I followed the lead Losing my mind, my heart, my body and sleep so slowly Then you told every little secret Karma was to blame You told every little secret Tarnish was the aim Hoping I would run back to you To find shelter in your arms Felt that if you told them the truth I would run from the alarm You whispered, you whispered, you whispered You whispered, you whispered, you whispered, you whispered. Oh. 